we got a good episode this week. We do a TumblrCon uh, wrap-up where we went over everything from blowouts to run-ins with the cops to dinners that went way too long. Uh, so definitely stick around and check it out. Well, as you can see, we're still having tea. Hey guys, welcome back to Craft Tea. This is episode 23. No guests this time. We had a pretty good stretch of guests, actually, and a lot of really good guests. And we've had a lot of stuff happen in the past two weeks, too. It was a lot. I was actually we wasn't get to even have a in a panic this time on. when we were like, oh, we gotta go like hurry up and shoot in between the 400 other things that we're doing today and this week. It's like, do we have a guest? Don't really care, because... We haven't done a wrap up still. Like well, that's you why said. I intentionally didn't put a, a guest so happened. we could talk about Tumblr. We didn't get to talk about anything that we did. The trip, no, the, the trip being there, and then the trip back. I know, we went over some of it in lives, and and other instances and stuff. But there wasn't really like a formal uh, <laughs> unfolding. It's in my face. Uh, now I know why I was so far back. Yeah, so I guess, why don't we just start with the trip, right? The trip down, and then uh, we can just kind of go chronologically, I guess. Well, I flew, so one, I made it harder on myself in the first place with that shuttle thing that I'm not going to do that shuttle again, ever again. I'll pay the extra $40 to go to the, the other one. I mean, so even leading up to it, we had to build a display days before we left Hour. now we had hours a year. technically we had a year whole year um That's not how we and do. i thought that the best part about it was that there was cooperation of that plan of the plan a year ago to do the displays the way we did it because when we got there with the shelf that we ended up actually getting the complete just one but we got one done <laughs> and it i feel like it came out really good it did um but when people, when we got down there, they were like, is this the shelf you were talking about making last year? And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad that you reminded me that I had 365 days to work on this and I spent only the last like 72 hours kind of straight on it. But yeah, and it was a good call that we got a sitter on the su Sunday because then, I mean, it would probably, I don't even know if it would have been fully painted. It was probably gonna not going to be skinned. Yeah, to I, go because you were just by yourself and then I'm filling like tediously filling in all the little wood divots and I'm like I'm just gonna paint the frame white that's it and I thought you were actually gonna be really upset when I came in and I was like we're gonna have to paint the inside inside and you're like there's no way I'm like no I already thought about it. I'm gonna have to get a paintbrush and maybe call Aubrey and we're gonna have to be here all day and I don't know how else to do it we just took it apart I, uh, just take it apart spray it I said that um I told you, I was like, just wood. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not allowing that, right? I was like, it's going to be, I don't want to open up a can of corn that I like can't, can't go back from because we're so close. And that's just a like you said, you're just like, you know what? What if we just do a little bit of white just to see how it goes? And I said, so, so, I said, just do it on the end because I know that I'm going to put vinyl over that. So just put it on the end. And then like I turn around and there's just like, <sighs> white everywhere it looked better but it was like streaky white so that's when we were like all right just get the paint gun and let's get her done and yeah came together we got it together uh got everything loaded up right the employees laid stuff uh packed stuff as we that morning i was laying things out in the showroom to still know what uh, we were to make sure that we had space, to make sure that we had what we needed. Meanwhile, I knew that we didn't have space because Jason showed up with, and he told me the size of the trailer, which I do not picture sizes at all, especially adequately. And I'm like, he comes up with this like... Five by eight cargo trailer. It's like this big compared to the stuff that we had to put in there. I'm like, all right, well, Sarah, you're not going to piss your husband off today. Do not say anything to this man. You know it's not going to fit. So let him do whatever it is that he wants to do. Yeah. And whatever don't fit, don't come. So that it was the plan. It all fit. Uh, ish. everything fit. Every, I mean, it, you brought everything. We didn't do any make and take though. That was that got scrapped because for space 
reasons and for uh, employee reasons. We were going to have a round table to do like a little UV supplies, make and take, though. which I didn't even want to come because I said we were going to do make and take when we got down there. We were like, well, just in case we have like, Ashley, no going to do it. Um, but I'm glad that the layout worked out the way that it did. I think it was fine. We brought the crafty desk. Um, it got a little scuffed. Yeah. It's on my side though. You can't She's really hurt. Do it. She's hurt in some places, but uh, pretty much held up. I thought that was fun to have that set up. If anybody watched that episode with Deanna, um, that was so much fun too. We, it was like impossible, impossible I to mean, get that episode down to shot. The table. It was like I just want to say the amount of stuff that was not in that episode <laughs> from people just coming into cameras talking. Just standing right in front of it. Not it hasn't been it. longer. You yeah. probably cut more I, than you kept. I cut about an hour. There was also a secret Misfits ma Misfit Makers cameo in that episode that didn't make the final cut. Ah. Yeah, there was a lot of, you know, people stopping by. There was, was yeah. Long. I mean, Deanna's popular, you know? She was like a beacon. She was like, everybody was like, oh my god! And Remember the girl thought she was Nicole Sutherland? Yeah. Because I had Nicole's cups. I forgot to bring cups. I, like, I didn't... Well, yeah, I guess technically I forgot. She's I had them wish. on my counter <laughs> with all my stuff, and that all none of that stuff came. So Nicole Sutherland from Blame Nicole let me have two of her cups that she made with our glitter anyway, and that's what I had on the table. And they're like, "Are you Nicole?" <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wish. Uh, but anyway, with the display stuff, like the the glitter, it all worked out. The cabinet that we got, there, it really right, did. it really worked. It did exactly what it was supposed to. Wheels didn't break off. Nothing really broke. Got a couple scuffs on the vinyl, but you couldn't even tell. People were really um, happy to see that vinyl. They were. They thought it was really nice. I, w I was like really stoked on it. Honestly, it's like one of them things where you just like had the picture in your mind, and it kind of you know came to fruition. But there's definitely some updates that I gotta definitely want to do. Um, but that's for probably next week because gotta start prepping our display for our own expo. Um, but yeah, that, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> when we got to, because we got an Airbnb, and then I checked in a little early because we got off the flight and got back there a little after 12 and still nailed. This is like the scariest thing that I think back on. I got into the house. She said she left check-in instructions under the mat. It was just a door code. So we got in, put all the stuff down, got us settled. And then I'm like, all right, I got to run back to the car and get a few things and her nap stuff and all that. So I know she's going to follow me. And the steps were weird. They were like decorative steps. And she would not have been able to get up and down them. She would have tumbled right down. So I close the door. I go to the car. I get the stuff. I come back. The door's locked. I never actually unlocked the door from the other side. And I didn't even, I don't even understand how these code doors work. I thought it was just a code you put in and then that's what you always do. It's just a code. No, you have to actually unlock it from the other side for it to be completely unlocked. It was like, it was only five seconds, but I swear it felt like 20 million thousand seconds of me going, Sarah, do you know the code? Do you know the code, Sarah? You have to know the code. Oh my God. And Alex is in the, there's um decorative windows on the side of the door and they're little squares and there's just this face and she's red, beat red, crying. Ah! I'm like, you have to know the code. I knew the code. I, I, that was like the, the time that I typed in those four numbers and that door went beep, beep, beep in the green. I was like, <sighs> my cell phone was in there. The car keys are in there. Not that I could have driven away anywhere. What would I have done? Uh, I'm in Texas. <laughs> there, so there's that. Jason's still two hours away. I don't know what I would have done. Uh, there was construction going on across the street maybe I would have ran over there and asked them to use their phone and then, I don't know, call Jason, ask him to log into Airbnb, message this woman, ask her the code, wait there while Alex is screaming, ask one of them for a shovel to bash one of the windows. I have no idea. I literally don't. I feel like that's a good advertisement for smartwatches, though. Oh. Um, that way your phone still would have been... And I have one that's not charged. Oh, man. Yeah, you oh. sent your text or made, whether the fire department or whoever. Yeah. Oh. Or, I mean, she would have been able to just but access her apps or whatever to get the code again, exactly. you know, because it's a, a smart watch. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, still think back of the, the feeling of relief that I got when it beeped green. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, when she told me if I wouldn't if I wouldn't have remembered the code in that instant, it would have just been we're calling a window place tomorrow because I would have that window would have been drop kicked so fast. 
I, 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 literally, I wouldn't even have made it across the street to ask the guys if they knew the code or anything. Like, hey, do you guys know anything about this Airbnb? They would have just been like, what was that glass breaking sound across the street? <laughs> and like, I really hadn't really explored the house yet. And even if I did, I don't live there. I don't memorize every lay of the land in this house. So she would have disappeared while I was outside. I would have no idea where she's going. No idea what she's doing. At least if we were at home, I'd have an idea of what kind of yeah, you didn't even savage, know what the house looked like. Yet. No, I, what kind Nothing. of trouble no she's getting into? Oh, um, so we got through that. But yeah, and you didn't even. I'm saying I, I was. I didn't want to stop you because I knew the story that you were going to get into. But uh, you skipped. You almost missed your flight. Yeah. You want to? You don't want to talk about that part? It gets me. It gets like a. I get really <laughs> upset. <I'm rolling>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so again, it was a little bit of my own fault for timing and I was doing great on timing. And then for some reason I was a little relaxed at the end, just gathering the list stuff that I didn't even put in the bag, got to the shuttle. The shuttle was catastrophe. Finally got on the shuttle and got to the airport. I've already mouthed off to the shuttle guy. I've already mouthed off to the guy at the booth and now I'm at the airport. I got, I get out of the shuttle and he lets me off like the terminals here. He lets me off over here, far away from all the doors. I got Alex. I have a rolly suitcase. I have the the um the rolly the, the the car seat which is on a roller. I have and those are big. The car seat roller was just a, a little bit bigger than the bag. I got a backpack and another backpack thing and the diaper bag. Yes. And Alex, who is about to be two and she wants to go everywhere and I'm just let off on the side of the airport. So I'm trying to roll the two bags, carry all three bags and her down the narrow sidewalk that you get between the craziness that's going on here that's everyone getting dropped off and picked up and then all the chaos is going over here which is like that weird check-in thing and whatever. They're not paying attention to me anyway. So we're trying to get through, finally get through and we, we flew first class. So you go over to the priority section and I looked and the line for the priority line did the zigzag. So I'm like, I know how to do the kiosk. All I got to do is get the things. The bag drop line super small. So I, I've flown a tons of times. So I know I can get through this kiosk real quick. So I'm getting through the kiosk and we're getting it. And I hit the, the uh, car seat and it says, and it says uh, uh, someone will be over to assist you. And I'm like, there's only one person over there. And she's at the bag drop line. And I waited. I waited very patiently. It was, so if you know what the kiosk looked like, they're a little circle. And I'm the back of the circle away from the lady. And I'm trying, I'm Sarah, calm yourself down and just be polite, be nice, don't get weird and just get through this. And normally I'm a very, very nice, very respectful person, very scared to start problems. But when my anxiety reaches a certain level, I'm a whole different person and you can't contain me. So I'm, I'm being very nice and I'm waiting and there's two people in line, the bag drop. And then um, two more people get in line and I'm waiting through it. I'm looking at the time, I'm starting to freak out, starting to be hard to breathe. And uh, this guy comes to the kiosk next to me. He's checking and now he has a problem too. And as soon as, soon as he has a problem, the lady at the counter frees up. And I'm already trying to like lean over him so that she could see me first because I've been very patient waiting here for you. And she goes to help him. But <laughs> she's walking towards him and he's like, I need help with this. I'm like outside of myself watching this, I swear. I left Alex, left my bags, and mind you, it's only a few feet. Walked around the kiosk, got in front of him, and said, this one also needs help too, first. <laughs> Sarah was at an 11. I'm like hot just thinking about it. I'm, I'm so not glad that, that I drove. <laughs> right? I'm not that person. Yeah, All I knew is that my my flight boards in like 30 minutes, not even, and I got to get out of this line, and I tried to do everything I can with this kiosk, and it's self-service, and I can't self-service myself. And the line over at the, the stupid zigzag line, it's empty. It's been empty at this point. Wow. So you should have went in the line. So should they react? She was just like, she still went to the first guy, the other guy and helped him. Mind you, he was in the wrong spot. He doesn't even belong where he is. He had to go get in line, and then she had to send me to a counter and have the girl at the counter check in and, and I was starting to collect myself again and, and I'm like shaking up there and I'm like I'm really sorry I'm, I, I'm catching it really close to my flight I've never caught it this close to a flight before I still gotta get through security with a toddler I just I'm just freaking out made it on the plane barely right yeah we got I got up there and they were 
it was like four minutes until boarding. And I mean, four minutes till boarding, you still get technically what, 20 to 30 minutes to board. But I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to play with none of that. Cause what if, uh, what if sometimes, cause we also have the TSA pre-check and we've gone to, t- to that line and it's been longer than the regular line. Yeah. I was like, we need to go to clear channel now. So um, we have both issues. So we have both, but I got on the plane and, and you know what? It was okay. And then you got down there, and then you had the house situation my baby in thing the house. with Alex. <laughs> uh, and then I made it down there, and my drive was... Good on the way down, right? Fine. I was fine. I had to leave. I just, uh, I think the worst part about my drive was living off of McDonald's french fries. And you're a little audio like, man now. Flipping so tired of it. So... You didn't before, pack a road bro. No, not, no, like I, not I just stop at a rest stop or whatever. So um, before we left, Patty was actually like, I left Monday after we loaded everything up here. And it was like 1145-ish when I hit the road finally. Patty was just coming back from her lunch break and was like, want me to grab you something? So she got me f- French fries. I was like, great. I'll have some fries for the road. Hit the road. Start going. Uh, and then I was stopping like every four to five hours or something like that for my stops. I went until like you stretch it until the last bit of stretch. Yeah, you I went literally like be hurting before he stops. Or, I went until like eleven or twelve, I think. On, That's why he doesn't want me on the road trips. <laughs> on Monday, um, and every place that I stopped at on the way, all they had attached to them was McDonald's. Like, and I was search. I was like, all right, guys, next rest stop. We got enough gas in the tank. And you just read the signs, you know, like what's off the exit. It was just, it was, it was McDonald's every time, every time. And like, and then when the timing was off, like the one I was, I finally had made it closer and there was like, um, uh, like a flying J or something like that, like a more traditional truck stop. And let's remind everyone real quick that you don't eat no meat. No, yeah, I don't need meat, so that's where it's the limit. That's what also that's why it was just French fries because I was tired of fish sandwiches. So McDonald's um, doesn't sound so bad when you're like, oh, chicken nuggets, a sandwich this time, that time. No, you don't eat meat. Yeah, I was just having French fries, and it's McDonald's French. Like I'm fine with it. I, I I'll literally just eat French fries if I have to. But clearly, it was just the McDonald's brand one that was driving me nuts. Anyway, we made it. it had no problems. Um. Got down there, and first thing we did was, what did we do? When we got... As soon as we got down there. We didn't bring In the, the Airbnb? Yeah, we or... didn't bring the trailer over yet, right? Until the next day. We returned the car in the morning. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's the... Ne- it's literally something every day of this story. So the next day... We, uh, Sarah had gotten a rental from the airport. We wanted to get the rental back, uh, because we had the navigator down there while we were down there. Well, that was one of the problems that I was facing is how do I get back from the airport to the Airbnb knowing that we have a car technically there. And then I have to spend six, $700 on a car rental. It literally took me four weeks to come up with the plan to just run it for one day. Yeah, that's what you I was just... going through different options. I'm like, well, maybe this was a little cheaper. Maybe Toro's cheaper. Toro's not cheaper. Yeah, so you got the rental. We dropped it back off at the we airport. We dropped it back off at the airport. Well, well no, hour. no, we didn't get to there yet. I still had the trailer hooked up out front of the house. Correct. We switched the car seat over to the navigator. So now I got the baby in the car with me. We haven't loaded the actual navigator. still pretty full of stuff. And um, Stop. we just go straight to TumblrCon because the Airbnb was like 10 minutes from there. Drop the trailer in the parking lot. We're like, it's not even vendor load in time yet anyway. So we're like, we'll come back in a couple hours and, and do the load in. Uh, in the meanwhile, we'll go drop the car off at the airport, grab some breakfast. So we go to pull out of the parking lot. I get red and blues behind me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I got like a fucking beacon on me when I get into Texas. They're like, high alert! He's in town again. You were breaking the law. I guess. No. Okay. In my... Fact. You were... There was a law that Listen. was opposed and you were breaking Yes. It. I sped a little bit. So in my defense, 
I had just got done pulling a trailer for 22 hours, so the car had a little more giddy-up than it had previously. I literally got pulled over in the first five seconds of pulling out of TumblrCon. Like, Me I pulled Jason are in out of the event cars, center, though. and it's in the, the event center is kind of centered in, like, a neighborhood-ish. It's got, like, this highway-ish road around it, and then it's neighborhoods outside of it. So, I'm turning onto that highway-ish road to head towards the airport, turned onto it, and just got on the gas a little too fast. I made it up to 50. Jason has the baby. I'm in a separate car. The speed limit's 40. I wasn't planning on going any faster than that, so that's... I mean, I was still in the wrong. It doesn't matter. I mean, honestly, I was in the wrong. sounds reasonable, but go ahead. I Continue think you on. assume that highway speed is 50. They find out any kind of... They're, it's just really... I guess sometimes. right there, they're pretty, they're pretty, like, stringent around that area, I guess. And I get it. Well, whatever. I shouldn't have been speeding. Either way. We pull into a gas station. I immediately... Well, here's the thing, is that I see, his, I see him pull out, and I'm like, this is for me. This is for me. You know what I mean? And then he puts on the lights, and I'm like, there's a gas station right here... I'm like, there's nowhere else to stop. I'm not familiar with the area, and I don't want to just stop in the middle of the highway. So I like, get back! Dude, like, a box comes flying up front, <laughs> and I go in, and so I, that I can make it into the parking lot, because the parking lot was like right there. I pull in, and I'm like kind of half in. I'm shaking, because, listen, for some reason... <laughs> When I get pulled over, I usually end up in a jail cell. I'm not even fucking kidding. So, I don't. I shake, guys. I fucking shake when I get pulled over. I don't like cops. I'm gonna fucking be dead honest right there. I am not okay with the judicial system. It's fucking flawed. And I'm not okay with it. So, uh, especially in Texas. Privatized fucking prisons. Get out of here. That's a whole nother argument. Anyway, um, <laughs> I got pulled over for doing the wrong thing. Anyway, I, I, I'm like panicking, shaking. We just got this navigator, so everything's brand new paperwork. I don't know where all the paperwork is, but I kind of do because it's brand new. Like, it's all in this stack. So I'm like, I'm going through the stack like this. Not even kidding. Visibly shaking. And I'm like trying to find everything. And the cop's like, I'm like, here's the registration, and I got to find the insurance. And I'm like, can it be on a phone? He's like, it could be on a phone. I was like, okay. I just got to figure out what app it's on. If it's on an app, I'm not sure. He's like, he sees me shaking, and he's like... I'm going to go through this stuff right now and I'll be back for the insurance. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I literally sat there for a second and was like, stop shaking. And uh, I found everything, everything, gave it to him. And what's funny is he comes back and it's a business vehicle. Everything is registered for the glitter guy first. And I still have a whole truck full of boxes that have glitter guy tape on it and stuff. And he's just like, so, uh, are you the glitter guy? Yes, I am. Funny you ask. And I was like, also, I found my insurance. Here it is on my phone. I handed my phone, and he's like looking at it and stuff. He's like, oh, you have a little bit of glitter under my phone's charging, but he's like, you have glitter under your screen protector. I was like, oh, sir, I have glitter under everything. And um, <laughs> so he was like, yeah, like I have a 17-year-old daughter. I get it. And, he, and it, 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 it lightened up. Everything lightened up. He was like, you know, please... He was like, what are you in town for? I was like, I literally just pulled out of the expo center to drop my vendor stuff. I was like, I am vendoring for a craft convention here. I'm in town until Sunday. Uh, he was like, please just pay attention to the posted speed limits in the area. I'm just going to let you off with a warning. I said, I really, really appreciate it. Um, so it was very, very kind of him. Like I said, I still don't necessarily take back my statement on police as a whole, but this was a gentleman, and I appreciate him. So um, I got let off, but... I was so shaky. And honestly, I'm not sure that if I didn't have my baby child behind me baby and stuff child. that it would have went down as smoothly. So, um, yeah, we got through it. We got to the airport. We dropped off the car. We got back. We go to have breakfast, actually. Well, we're like, hey, let's, uh, let's do some breakfast. And then Sarah says, um, well, my parents are here already. We knew they were coming, but we just didn't know they were coming that early. So that was a little bit of a curveball, too, is just not knowing that you have more guests than expected as soon. 
which is still, it actually all worked out completely fine. It worked it out did. for the best. I think it was all fantastic. But it's just one of those things. I just got pulled over. I just like, my anxiety level's up here. And I'm like, hey, can we go get breakfast? It's like, yeah, but um, in-laws are in town also. And I'm like, huh? Breakfast? Where? Breakfast? So we got- Let me tell you, Jason makes things like that real easy. Not easy. It wasn't easy. I snapped a little bit. But we got breakfast and everything was fine. Um, and now that place is like one of our favorite places. First Watch. First Watch. Yeah, they're everywhere. There's one in Cherry Hill. But it's really good. They have really good, uh, like, vegetarian-friendly breakfasts. So that was nice. Um, and then we went to TumblrCon. And then we got to do TumblrCon. So that was like the trip down. Sarah had her little crazy stuff. I had my little crazy stuff. We had a good setup too. So we were like, last year we were against the wall because I thought maybe being closer to, to Steel Magnolia would be cool, but being against the wall wasn't that cool. We were an end cap in now the Pella middle. Now Doors is where we were. Puddle of Doors? Pella Doors uh, is where we were. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> We were an end cap. There's three rows, and we were the end cap in the middle row. So, like, that's perfect. We're, like, center for everything. Because you can't really leave your booth for that long. Uh, but, of course, me, I'm, like, a little butterfly. I want to leave every five seconds to go talk to people, which I did a good amount of that. And we had Ashley Lee from Craft Crate on the ones. It was CCDIY right next to us, and then Ashley from Craft Crate right next to her. And that was perfect because Will is the honorary babysitter. Yay, Will! <laughs> while Ashley runs the crew and he did that last year he does it so good but they have a daughter two named Rose who plays with Alex and that was perfect with those two and then on this side was Ashley Mears which actually didn't get as confusing as you would think it would did and Ashley had Brooklyn with her which was perfect because all three of the girls just played mm-hmm. I mean it was mostly perfect <laughs> yeah they they played oh yeah they played for show and then they've, uh, I, my favorite is when you could see, because the, both the girls are older. I can't remember. Brooklyn's eight and uh, Rose is six or seven. I'm bad with ages. They're above Alex's age. And they were doing so well with her the first day. Mostly the second day was well. And you could tell there was a turn. First, Bro- Brooklyn took the turn first and didn't want to share the balloon anymore with neither Rose or at, or a. Uh, Alex. Alex. At first it was she didn't want to share it with Rose and then she just didn't want to share it with either of them and she kept reminding them that this was her balloon first. And I'm like, she was right. But also, girl, we have a million balloons at the Airbnb because Ashley Mears was staying with me at my Airbnb and Kirsten was blowing up the darn balloons. We got more balloons! Give it to Rose! Let Alex play! She's crying. No. So we got through that and Rose was still being very patient with her and then towards the end of that day is when Rose was like, I'm not patient with you no more. Ashley Lee brought um, a Plinko game, ironically, and they were playing that. So Rose asked if Alex could play because Brooklyn wasn't, uh, I don't think Brooklyn was in the convention center at the time. So I was like, sure. So she goes over and then I meander over there a little bit and they're just putting the little coins in there and they're having, Alex is having the time of her life because she's as tall as it. So she does this and it goes down and she's like, this is great. I'll do it again. And Rose is, you know, throwing him in, but I could see the look on Rose's face is, is starting to turn a little bit mildly annoyed. And then she's like, okay, Alex, it's my turn. And I just clench up. I'm like, ooh, what does that mean? Your turn? Do you get them all? Do, can she get one? Can she do it while you're doing it? So then she's like, can I have them now? And Alex is not understanding what she's saying. And I don't want to really intervene yet. So I'm like starting to hand Rose the coins. I think there's five coins. Apparently the rules are This little girl gets to put all five coins in until she gets them all where they belong. And then this little girl gets to do the same thing, but you have to take turns and one does it at a time. You cannot do it at the same time. I didn't know these rules, so now I know. But how do I get them into play is the question. (laughs) So she finally got all five coins and goes like this and puts them behind her until Alex, or it was four of them, until Alex gave her the last coin. And I'm like, it's not going to turn out well. I think I might have finally distracted Alex, and that's how I got her away from it. But for the most part, I think for their ages, they did fantastic. Yeah, Alex wants to be mobile now, so we had her buggy thing. She wasn't having it. Uh, no. So she didn't ride in the buggy. Um, and then the latter part of TumblrCon, I had to kind of relegate her back to the house because she is... A two-year-old. Which was great because my parents were there and they don't get to spend time with her anyway. No. And then we got to actually walk around TumblrCon. 
uh, and shop. That, I actually said that to Jason. I'm like, I hope you know that the only reason I agreed that Alex could stay at the house all day today is because it opened up you to come shop with me around this place. And we did. I got a lot of stuff. I got a lot of foils. We got foils from Artistic Painting Co. and Southern Bell. And we haven't used any of them yet. I'm pretty sure they're still mildly packed up, but that's okay. Artistic Painting Studio. But and, I, uh, I said co again, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh, and Zipper Pools uh, from Raw. Love. The giblet thingies. Do you even have your giblets that I bought you? I don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. I honestly wanted to put them on the thing. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Uh, but anyway, that was fun. It was. I always have the best time there. Uh... Just because of the people that go. And and I convinced, I think almost, if not all, of the ones that I really talked to to come to the Great American Craft Expo. And that's not even an advertisement. That's just me getting very excited at this point that I convinced all of them. Most of them were already coming. I just had to gather a few extras because now Peachy's coming. She's not vendoring. She's just coming as a guest. And she better get classes tickets, I think. Uh, she would probably take Nookies. And then we tried to do... You guys had different things different nights right oh, you had every different single parties. night there was a different thing i had to go to uh which was actually fun and then the last night we tried to do like a group groupish dinner with like <laughs> you know most of the people that were in the house and stuff and that was interesting because it was like all right where does everyone want to eat does everyone want to eat together sure where do we want to go nobody cares all right What's the closest spot? Well, you want like a steakhouse? Everyone can find something from a steakhouse. Longhorn sounds good. Go there. Hour and a half wait. All right. Fuck that. So look up the next closest thing. Oh, well, Ashley's been talking about Abuelos all week. That's across, across the street. The street. Does any, will anyone call him? I'll call him. So I call. No, they were like, hey, yeah, if you come now, it'll be like five minute wait. You guys are good to go. All right. We'll be right, like right over. So call everyone back. Hey, Abuelos is ready. Oh, well, we called another steakhouse called Silver Fox that said that they have a table ready for us right now. We can be there. All I knew right. Nicole really Sounds wanted a steak. Sounds real so interesting like... that this steakhouse has an hour and a half wait and this other steakhouse five minutes away has no wait. We had 11 people. Questionable. So, with a name like Silver Fox, it kind of sounds expensive. You look it up. It says it's expensive. Go to the door. It's got a plaque that says... Proper attire required, engraved in brass. Like, it's not, this ain't like cardboard and marker. This and is like, like legit. Closed up. There's no windows or anything. You don't get to see in. Like, there's a big door. It's one of those. It's People the, came out looking like they were going to a wedding. It's I'm the like, ambiance, yeah. It's a blazer required type place. So, they let us in. Mind you, I put my blazer on for them. Granted, it's neon green, hot pink, has leopard and zebra stripes on it. Um, it matches this table actually really well. I tried to convince everyone not to go in there. I'm like, we could still we said change it our ten minds. times. Like, yo, are we definitely going in? We're half in, and we're like, are we doing this? And everyone's like, yeah, we're doing it. It's fine, guys. It's fine. And we get in there and sit, and they put us in like a like a table room for people that they don't want <laughs> see we I, don't, I think big, we had a big party so they put us in the big party room i'm pretty sure which made me even more nervous because i'm like oh my like you when you talked it kind of echoed a little bit and everyone was afraid to talk we got kids here there's nothing on this menu yeah. under 52 dollars a plate straight like, up you open it up and it was like a any dish started at like 50 bucks and that's like i don't even want that type of food right now like i really enjoy some four or five star restaurant type food. But like, that's not what I want right now. I'm exhausted, man. Like that's, no, I don't I need an experienced dinner after I'm exhausted. I just want some food on a goddamn plate and shovel it down my throat right now so I can go to bed ASAP. I had a shirt with Jen Parnell's face on it that said looking for a, a sugar mama for $20. Like we don't belong here right now. Yeah. I, my Target shorts and me, we gotta go. And I'm waiting. I'm like, waiting for anything that can get us out of here because one i don't want to spend this kind of money on this food i want to sit and enjoy it i don't like you said i just want to eat and go home and sleep nicole's so, husband wants to fight the kid for snickering at my jacket nicole kind of i can't remember Which what it was all in said, good fun dude but nicole was on the right of me and she whispers something i don't know if she said it to me or sean and i was like it's not too late we can go she's like what do you mean like can we just leave and i'm like yeah 
I I think they'd rather us just leave. And she's like, I have um twenty dollars. I was gonna give the waiter just twenty dollars and let him know like what's happening. Corey, um, our friend Corey's across from us and she hears what's going on. She's like, I got ten on it and gives her a ten dollars. <laughs> so now we're giving them thirty at least. So uh at least we got a thirty dollar tip. To do nothing. At this point, we're starting to clue in the, the top of the table with everyone else. Because like I said, we have 11 people. Me, Corey, Sean, and Nicole are at the very end of it. So um, our whisper's done. We're set. We're leaving. And I'm filling everyone else in. The look of relief on everyone's face. And they were like, should we go now? Robin's like, I'll walk out first. I don't care. And I was like, I just, I'm going to hang back with Nicole because I knew everyone's going to kind of like make their way out and that Nicole was absolutely not going to leave until she found this waiter and gave him that money. And at this point, I don't even remember what he looked like and everyone looks the same. And I think Nicole kind of thought similar. So I'm like, I'm not going to leave her alone. That's when Sean told me about the thing with the jacket. I thought that was so sweet. He thought that the guy said what he said in like a mean way. He's like, was he being sarcastic? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I th- I, I, so I think that because I obviously put it on in like a joking manner because I had it in the car. And it was like, yeah, you guys need proper attire. And I'm like, all right, bet. If you guys need me to wear a blazer, I'll wear it. But it's going to be my blazer. And then I think the kid that works there, which is definitely in like his early 20s, probably thought that that was funny and was like, I like your jacket when I walked through. And uh, Nicole's husband, what's his name? Sean. Sean. That's what I thought it was Sean, but I didn't want to say that. And he's a bigger wrong. man. I don't know why. He like, is, him I was standing so there like Listen, a stocky guy looking down just like, was he being serious right now? Because I'm mad. I'm like, you were so sweet. You're melting my little heart. I said it. I said it. I was like, every husband that I meet is a fraction of my size. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, why am I always the biggest husband? And this dude comes out and makes me feel tiny. And I'm like, yeah. Big burly husband, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to tell the that. He was really cool, though. I I really enjoyed him. We had not met Nicole's husband before, but I've met Nicole before. And I I mean, I talk to Nicole every day. All right. So listen, we walk out of that restaurant and in the same parking lot across the street, there's an Irish type bar. And we're like, this looks more our speed. We're an hour in at this point. So we're like, let's go. Let's go here. Let's try this. They've got to have some fair in there. Looks good. We go to go in. They're doing some sort of freaking fest with like bands and shit playing. There's not a, anywhere to move in there. It smells fucking horrible. It's loud. So I am so glad that that was a hard no. We're like, oh, can't do that. So then we pivot. There's an Italian restaurant down the end of the same drag. So we were like, let's just walk down the sidewalk, get to the Italian restaurant. We get out front of the Italian restaurant, and there's one of them A-frame sidewalk signs that says restaurant is reserved for a private party closed to outside people so swing and a miss on number four now uh if you're picking up where and they were like whoa well, so uh what about abuelos i said listen i ain't making that call i called and the lady said that i'm ready for you and then i'm not calling back to say hey guys we tried four other places first so you guys you guys do it so they called and, and they said it was all good and that we could go there which mind you we went there and it was still like a 15, 20 minute wait, which I felt like, you know. It was 10, 15. It was a while. It was good food though. Yeah, it was good. So we go, we sit, but we wasted so much time in looking for all the other restaurants and stuff that by the time we like got served, ate, all that stuff, it's like 1130, I think. I was like too exhausted to eat half of my damn food by then. It was like so much of an experience until we actually had food on tables. <laughs> we were even saying it like... All right. In the beginning, this felt like a good idea, and this is uh, feeling feeling otherwise. <laughs> I really uh, enjoy that we get to do those kinds of things, though, because like those people that we had dinner with, like we interact with them and talk yeah. to them all the time, but we don't ever actually get to just hang out and really just talk in person about things like that. And I think it's you know it's hard on the sleep, but I'm glad that we uh, got the opportunity to do those things. Because the dinner was by chance. I left early to go check on Alex that day. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even think I was going to come back. But I got Alex to sleep. Because TumblrCon was till 8. I got Alex to sleep by 7.15. I'm like, I mean, we're seven minutes away. I could just run right back. So I didn't even tell Jason that I got her down. I just ran right over to surprise him and ran into Nicole. That's when I was like, what are we doing for dinner? She's like, oh, I'm going out. I'm like, oh, yeah, you go out. And I'm like, well, I'm not going out because I'm married to Jason. He don't go out. So then I went up to Jason and I was like, "What do you I know wa- these things happen when you go out. What do you want to do? <laughs> I'm just saying. What do you want to do for dinner? And I think I mentioned that Nicole was going out and everything. And I don't know what you want to do. He's like, do you want to go out? I'm like, yeah, I do. Do you want to go find Nicole? We can go out. 
I was really wishing I would have done Mu Ya again. It was way easier. <laughs> Um... but that was still fun. And then we got to do wrap up and start our head back, which was a whole nother experience. Um, I like didn't even want to talk about One, it. packing the trailer took so quick. I we were ours was breaking broke down, packed up nicely too, and on the trailer in under an hour. And craft crate, because we Well, transfer I wasn't messing craft around. crate I, stuff I, too, and they were on the trailer barely not far behind us. The loading dock, you can um, fit two trailers next to each other, like back them up to it for loading in. And somebody was already backed up. I think it was Maker Flow was already backed up on the one side. And I wasn't even the like second one there for loading, but nobody had backed their trailer up. Honestly, I think a lot of the people there aren't very good at backing trailers up, so they probably didn't want to risk. backing so close to another one uh your boy can back a trailer though so i was like right up in there uh we got everything loaded in like sarah said this is the part that i said i didn't want to br bring it up as much but i actually had uh, so much conversation and a lot of it i all of it i really enjoyed but with crafty cow and i just don't know how to say his name so i'm not gonna even try got his card his card says his name me and sean both looked at it and we were like okay Nope, not going to try. So, I don't think I know his name. that's what I'm saying. I feel so rude right now. That's why I didn't want to bring it up. So, I'm just going to say Crafty Cow, and I'm sorry if you watch this, Mr. Crafty Cow. But, Mister. but he uh, spoke with me, like, the entire time that we were there, because the booth was right next to us. He was And really nice. the conversation was fantastic. I honestly would like to have him on here at some point. We could talk to him, and he can actually tell me how to pronounce his name properly, like Chiquita did. And, uh... That was good, too. I, that's what, see? Just tell me once and I got it. And then uh, he can also tell us about how they acquired Cuposaurus because they actually own Cuposaurus, which I did not even realize that until that instance. So that was one of the things that I thought was great about TumblrCon was learning more about the vendors that operate in the same space as me. Um, and, and getting to know them because while I didn't get to know, apparently, how to say their names... Uh, I do know that the conversations that I had were great. But anyway, what I was trying to get at I'm was just gonna have he's to the one that name. saw so was I. <laughs> he's the one that saw the tire of the trailer was not great. It was actually so I bought this trailer. All of this was very last minute. We didn't even go over that part in how when we made this the weekend before TumblrCon also bought the trailer that Sunday, the day before I left from Facebook Marketplace. Um, didn't even get to give it a, the most solid once over. Definitely has a couple of issues. Found one of them of which out, which was the driver's side tire was in horrible condition. It had definitely been drug a couple times. Had some of the bands showing on the sides and stuff. So when uh, Crafty Cow was walking past uh, the loading area, saw my tire was not in great condition, was like, hey, pulled me aside and was like, you might want to just take a look at that because that's not going to do so great, especially in this like extreme heat and everything. Uh, chance of a blowout probably pretty high and i'm like i'm with you also i ain't got time to stop nowhere so send it uh so that that we did got uh sarah and the baby dropped off at the airport and Lindsay, because Lindsay had flown in to help us as well we were luckily just a half hour apart from each other in flights and then i was off like right from there dropped you guys at the airport and then i was on right on the highway continuing on And I was moving and grooving. Everything was fine, flowing, uh, very limited traffic, a lot less than it was coming down because I was uh, moving on a Sunday. And then it got to, I was right outside of Lebanon, um, Tennessee, Tennessee, and It's had, 10 o'clock for you, 11 o'clock for me. yeah, I was right, I was an hour before the time change, uh, And I had my blowout. I was literally driving for like almost 12 hours. I was yeah, uh, yeah. I was just under three hours away from my rest stop, or not my rest stop, from my from being hotel. done for the night, from my hotel. Already had the room booked and everything. You booked it on the phone for me. Um, the only thing I can say is that I had my blowout in the most opportune place if I was to have one. It was crazy. So had it. 
pulled over. There was solid shoulder. There was even a full shoulder of gravel. I get all the way over to make sure that I'm completely out of the way of everything. Um, and I get unhooked from the trailer first thing. Cause I'm like, that's obviously what I'm going to have to do. And then I call Sarah and I'm like, I got to just think this through, come up with a solid plan here. Can't just panic. Um, so first thing I do is make a Facebook post that just says like, Hey guys, does anyone know where I can get a trailer tire this size? I went out, took pictures of the one that didn't blow. Fortunately, because the one that did blow blew so bad that you couldn't read any of the numbers anymore. So I wouldn't even have known what I needed, honestly. Um, figured that out, made my post and then started searching for stores. I found a Walmart that closed at 11. It was like 10, 20 or something. I had 40 minutes and this Walmart's off the next exit. So I'm like, all right, drop the trailer, put the locks on it, run, go to here, buy two of these tires as a, just in case these wheels, um, start heading back to my trailer Mind you, I don't have a jack. They didn't have any jacks for sale. So I was just like, and I'm not absolutely sure still if the navigator has any jacks like with it. Because I just got it. Them. I didn't get to check it. Um, so I am on my way back to the trailer and I get a phone call from one of my friends. It's like, hey, do you mind if I give this dude Kirk your phone number? Uh, he lives in Lebanon and he's like out working tonight and he says he's got the size wheel you need and i started doing the thing that i always do and like over explaining my situation and i've stopped and i said to dave i was like dave i'm gonna stop myself and yes i will absolutely take the help like what the fuck was wrong nice with me you. i have no idea like i was like oh yeah like i just you know i got these tires shut up just shut the fuck up dude take the help so and, I, and I'm so glad that I took that help because the tires that I got from Walmart were actually like hot trash. We put one of them on um, for the top side that didn't blow because we thought that would be better than the one that's older on there still. He follows me up to a gas station a couple miles up the road. Mind you, like 20 minutes later, the guy Kirk shows up with the tire. We replace the one, switch it over, go to a gas station to make sure that all the air in the tires is good. By the time we got there, which was only a couple mi miles away... You could feel that new tire was so hot from the stress load on it. Uh, so we had to put the old one that didn't blow back on, make sure its air was all good. Um, wild, though, because it's the exact same ratings, that tire. So it's just, just garbage Walmart junk. Um, that would have absolutely blown, that brand new one. It was so hot, I can't believe it didn't blow just in them couple miles. So anyway, back off to the races. I'm heading out. This is only like, I lost maybe like an hour. Which is impressive. That's why I said, I was like, it could have been so much worse. The fact that I was able to have like uh, a friend of a friend that lived five minutes from where my tire wasn't blew out. busy. Had the trailer tire that I needed on hand, good to go. Like everything, they said, worked out. Kept going. I get a phone call. It starts torrential downpouring to the point you can't flip and see. Also, by the way, guys, when I went to hook my trailer lights back up after we got done fixing the tire, it was very dark. I should have turned off all the lights anyway, like, but it was dark. But when I went to push it in, I pushed it in a little sideways at first. It did a little spark thing. I'm positive that I popped the fuse either. I just don't know if it's on the navigator or the trailer side. It's in the middle of the night, and I don't know where all those fuses are at the moment anyway. So I just had to make the decision. Fixed tire, lost trailer lights. That sucked. Um, but fortunately, the trailer is so small that you can see the navigator lights around it. So at night, I honestly felt safer driving with it without lights than during the day because you could see the reflection of the, of the lights, whatever I was doing, turn signals, whatnot. We make it. To that gas station, it's an hour and a half later, it starts torrential downpouring, the lady from the hotel calls me and she's like, are you still coming? And I was like, uh, I promise I'm still coming. Trying. Uh, I just had a blowout and she's like, oh, I'm just calling because they're, they're saying really bad weather is coming through and I just, you know, just drive safe. I was like, oh, I'm in it. I'm aware. It's, and it was bad. Finally make it to the hotel. It is three in the morning. Um, they put me in a room that faces the sunrise. So no matter what you did with the curtains to close them, it didn't matter that much. So I slept about two and a half hours, I think. Uh, got back up and sent it. I essentially used it like a nap and... Basically what it was. Was back on the road and got back home around five? Five or six? 
I think so. But my plan was to get back around four, and I think I was just delayed by like an hour-ish, because I just, I, I wanted to Yeah, get I think you were still home before six. At least a couple hours of sleep. But yeah, uh, other than the blowout, the drive home honestly really wasn't that bad. Like, it was just like this horrible inconvenience that happened, obviously, but... That it was, was our, an experience. That was our Tumblr con. It was our Tumblr con. But it was fun. It really it was, was fun. I, I can't wait for next year. I know I like complain a lot about all this stuff, but like it, I'm not going to just welcome it with embracing. Hey guys, I had a blowout and it was amazing. But the whole experience as a whole was still a great experience. Like, I appreciate that you I said didn't that. like having a blowout. I didn't like getting pulled over by a cop. I didn't like having to go to four restaurants and all that shit, but it was all cumulatively still a wonderful experience. And I had a whole lot of fun and would definitely do it again. Um, same. I have a fun story that's not TumblrCon related, but we talked about it in the car this morning and it's still blowing my mind about Rachel Nola. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So most of you, probably all of you guys, know who Rachel Nola is. Uh, she owns Mr. Nola's Glitter, and I'm friends with her on Facebook, and I'm reading her Facebook status this morning, and she's going on about how she, um, and I asked her if I could tell this story already. She um, she hired this cleaning company, and I'm not going to say the name of it, although she did name them, and the lady came while she while Rachel was away and David said her husband said everything was fine. So the next time that she wanted her to come over, she hired the very same lady. So the lady came over, was cleaning for a few hours and texts Rachel and says, hey, I'm not really feeling well. Do you mind if I come back later and finish it up? And Rachel's like, oh, you know, I totally understand not feeling well. So, of course, there's no rush. Come on back. So Rachel gets a notification on her phone at 3.30 that someone's in her driveway. And she looks at the camera because she's got cameras outside and inside the house. So she looks at the camera and sees the car in the driveway. And the lady sits in the car until about 6 o'clock. She gets out of the car. She walks around the car. She gets back in the car. She turns on the windshield wipers. Windshield wipers go off. Yeah, something's weird. So Rachel's son comes over uh, to the house and calls his mom right away. He's like, mom, do you know this person? And she's like, yes, that's my cleaning lady. He's like, you need to stop hiring randos. I'm not kidding. And I'm like, oh my God, she's wasted, wasted beyond belief. So Rachel comes home and the lady's still in the driveway. <laughs> she says, honey, you know, I think that it's time for you to go. The lady says that she's been trying to go, but her car won't start. Uh, cause it's dead. So, um, the car was not dead. <laughs> Her brain was dead. No, you have to breathe into a breathalyzer to start the car. She got DUIs. She yeah. can't start her own car because she's right. wasted. The lady's sleeping now. So the, the lady's car is sleeping. dead. She just killed her yeah, with a breath. With the lady's sleeping. Um... <laughs> So Rachel calls the cops, took three cop cars, and it's, she has a picture of the cop cars in the driveway, uh, took three cops to wake her up. The lady does not know her own name, her birthday, where her wallet is, where she is, nothing. You guys may be wondering where she got the alcohol, but you, if you weren't before, you are now. She drank Rachel's alcohol. Drank, Rachel said almost a whole bottle of 1800, uh, tequila, that's tequila, right? Jose Cuervo. And then dipped into her vodka, which is a brand I've never heard of. And Rachel said she got it as a gift for one of her birthdays. And she was just holding on to it and saving it for something. She cracked it open and drank some. There's a picture. Rachel has a picture of her just laying. She's like laying like this. Legs out and everything from the side of the car. She looked like she wasn't wearing pants either. She looked like she wasn't. She looked. I'll ask Rachel for some pictures we can cut in. She called the cops. The cops called her boyfriend. The boyfriend came and got her. That would, I don't. That's letting her down easy. That's what I said. So that's what Sarah was like. Oh, well, well, technically she wasn't driving or anything, right? Because it could But, she start, had but I was like, somehow. but she still stole, right? Like she stole that liquor. She drank it. I was like, so the only reason she's not getting arrested is because Rachel isn't pressing charges. So especially she's got a breathalyzer in her car because she has a history. Yeah, clearly behind the wheel. So now I'm like, I don't, I don't think I'll call one of them cleaning services. I'll call like See, a small time after, cleaning service, but like two I didn't even want to bring it up either because after you said that story, I want to say people like that ruin it 
for anyone else in that career, for the whole career, because now Sarah heard this story, and now she told the story, and anyone listening to this hears this story and goes, I probably have to fire my cleaning lady now if I have one, and also, if I was thinking about getting one, fuck that. And it just sucks, because like one bad apple ruins the whole bunch. Speaking of Rachel, though, we did... It's the same thing with the kids' schools. We're, like, afraid of kids' schools because of, like, news stories. But it's, like, it's very real that these things happen. Isolated, for the most part. But it's just like, well, if it happened once, it could happen again. So, it's just, it sucks. But it's, like, instead of putting in restrictions or... uh regulation to prevent that from happening well oh, they she yeah. had restrictions right she needs more she yeah. didn't care she's man like that what else are you other than just like locking that lady up and throwing away the key they did kind of lawfully what they're supposed to do to keep her in check yeah I guess and macro it's just like cleaners i mean i wouldn't have hired someone that needs the breathalyzer thing if we, you have uh, to drive to your jobs we just actually, I don't even know if you can consider it drama, but pretty much just had some craft tea with Rachel that I was, I don't even know if I told you about the conversation. I didn't even get to tell you about the conversation that we had, but since I brought her name up anyway, I think you guys know, if you follow the glitter guy, what it makes you think of the glitter guy? Ducks, right? Yeah. So then I get this screenshot at this point a few weeks ago now, and Rachel's giving out ducks. And I'm like, oh no, I really like Rachel. What do I do? I don't want Rachel to give out ducks, but I I don't want to be your enemy, but what do I do? I'm like, I'm not going to do anything and she's going to stop. I'm just going to ignore it because this is going to go away. I know this is going to go away because I don't want to deal with it. So it, we went to TumblrCon and then I got more screenshots that there was another duck hunt going on. And I'm like, what is she doing? Why? I don't want to deal with this. I like Rachel. So I finally put my big girl pants on and I sent her a message. <laughs> I, to, I would not show you a screenshot because then you'll truly see how much of a crazy person I am. But I sent her and I was like, so, because we were talking about something else. And I was like, all right, but I do think that we have to talk. And then I sent her three more messages that were just blank messages. And one that said, I'm just bumping this in case you are... uh monitoring your messages because like you can see it on your drop down menu sometimes and sometimes i'll see it and i'll do i'm like nope not today not getting into that today we're not going to do that so i'm like i have to do this now while my big girl pants are on so she came back and she's like what what's wrong and i'm like you know what's wrong and she's like what's going on i'm like because i was like because i got screenshots and she's like what are the screenshots i'm like the ducks and immediately she and i felt it the way she was saying it and everything that she was like genuinely shocked and i i feel like i could see it going through her head like <gasps> the docs oh my god the docs see what you guys aren't realizing is that rachel just got a jeep in january and if you guys know anything about the jeep they ripped me off they ripped off my ducks i'm just gonna say it. i had the ducks first then jeep had ducks second i had ducks first but she's very into the jeep thing and they do the they go on the jeep retreats and they bring the docs and i know that they bought the docs for the jeep thing but somehow the docs made it into the glitter thing <laughs> Uh, but what I, my point of my story is that when I brought this up to Rachel, she made it very, very easy to talk to her about it. She made, she was very understanding. We came to a very good, um, conclusion. That's not the word I wanted, but it's what I went with. And, um, she, she was, she was like, I'll go on Facebook resolution. She's like, I'll go on Facebook right now and rectify this. I will tell everyone that you're the docs. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't, no, no, no. Let's not do that. You don't have to do anything crazy. I just, you know, wanted to talk to you about it. And I, again, I just cannot appreciate how easy she made that for me because I'm not protective about much. I'll tell you what I pack my glitter machine. I'll tell you all about my glitter machines. I'll tell you all about where I get my boxes, where I order this from. Very protective over the docs. So it's, our, it's been our thing forever. Mm -hmm. And again, I just, that could have been a very dramatic blowout between the two of us and it was absolutely not she was very apologetic and i do believe her too because i saw the jeep thing she told me about the jeep thing before like everything just makes sense and uh just get the ducks out of the glitter <laughs> it's kind of like what i said um but i was glad that she made that easy for me especially because i really wanted to see 
I didn't even know that was coming. The story about the cleaners. I would have missed that whole thing if I would have just blown up and popped off like I did at the airport. And then we weren't able to to uh, salvage this friendship anymore. I would have never known about the cleaning lady. And we would have never been able to end craft tea with that. And with that, we will end craft tea. Because it's time to go. Woohoo! We got lots to do. Don't ain't it so. We're making tea. But, uh, when making yep. tea, you always Let's bring the pot to the kettle and never bring the kettle to the pot. Now, pour the tea.